Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the weekly outlook video from your friends, the team at Privateer FX. Just was going through some of the work past couple hours, the charts, you know, kind of reading the weekend news is kind of a typical Sunday for us. Uh, you know, we always say it's the best time to prepare for the week ahead as markets aren't officially open yet. So you're not staring at the screens and the price action. Gives you time to think, take some notes. You know, for example, I've got a couple pages of chart notes and a couple pages of some of the fundamental um, framework that we look at and you know and what's coming up ahead in the on the economic calendar for the week ahead and anything that transpired over the weekend uh, I need to find my mouse here okay so anyhow why don't we um, I was just reading on Bloomberg earlier that uh, Trump was tweeting today saying that he's meeting with his trade advisors and um, you know there's been some positive developments we've heard a lot of that a lot about that last last uh, week which is you know one of the reasons why risk was on you know pretty aggressively as the week progressed um, you know to me it looks like it's uh, to us it looks like it's just kind of kicking the can down the road the FT put something out saying this is putting pressure on Trump to delay raising tariffs at the March 1st deadline and to facilitate a make or break summit with G in the in the future so you know our best guess is this gets pushed down the road you know maybe a few weeks to a month where he can sit down with G himself and then they can come out with some you know major breakthrough but uh, seems like the positive news is all priced in on the trade front and uh, you know we're one headline one tweet from Trump away from uh, you know a correction of this recent move um, one thing I found interesting from uh, one of our friends in Australia was talking about the economic data surprises and you know the US and Japan were the only two major economies that were still surprising on the positive side and last week with uh, we had some weaker data uh, in particular the retail sales out of the US it flipped the data surprise index from a plus 17 to a negative 23 this tends to correlate pretty well with the S&P 500 so you know we are starting to see a slowdown in the US with it with the US economic data now comparing that the US is at minus 23 and the euro zone is minus 80 so it's still the you know it's it's, it's it's still outperforming the Eurozone da data. Japan is still positive, uh, not that their economic data seems to drive the yen anymore and hasn't in years. Uh, but it is interesting. You know, we are keeping a close eye on this, especially with, you know, the dollar bullish sentiment um, that we've seen. You know, Euro sentiment index got down, I think, to as low as nine last week and has, uh, has bounced a bit but you know still still pretty low um, and we do have some we do have quite a bit of economic data coming out of the, out of the euro zone um, in Germany in particular and we've got the ECB minutes um, who is it speaking Villaroy I think was speaking or Kerr Kerr was speaking what did I say uh, on Friday he said it might there might be scope for another TL TRO and remember that operation is um, basically the ECB lending um, money to the European banks because that banking sector looks like dog shit um, you know you've got you've got the Spain stuff going on you've got um, snap elections were called in Spain for the end of April Germany just missed a recession with their GDP numbers you know Brexit BS it you know just will not end um, and it sounds like Italy might be calling a snap election as well. So there's still really nothing good coming out of Europe. However, and we'll look at the charts, um, you know, with the sentiment so low and the economic data has deteriorated, you know, very rapidly the past few months, I feel like any little bit of good news could flip this 
and you'll start seeing people covering their euro shorts and maybe even putting on some fresh longs this week. So it's an important week, definitely on the fundamental, the global, you know, the global, uh, global ec macroeconomic data front. Jesus, been a long weekend. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of liking, um, I'm going to look at some euro straddles on the open. Uh, we did this trade last week, and it, it paid smalls with uh, the UK because there was a huge, um, you know, a lot of U UK economic data plus the Brexit saga that will never end. And we did okay on it. Um, we ended up just making money on the on the put side of it because cable did sell off a bit during the week. Um, if you remember, the straddle for the week was 120 pips. And that was so that's your break even. And you know we had a we had a decent move down. I mean, here's the on the left chart here. Here's the weekly range. It was 129.58, and it got down to 127.73. So you know that's more than covers the straddle. Um, it, it does require some execution, and uh, you know you got to leave orders and loop orders, and it, it's definitely um, a bit intensive on the execution side. But keeps you engaged. And uh, it worked out okay. So we might do something similar um, with a couple of the other pairs this week. So we're not really taking a directional view, but we do think it's going to move more than the options market is pricing. Let me have a sip of coffee. Um, as far as sentiment goes, um, just a couple things that I'm highlighting, and then, then we'll get to the charts. Uh, we'll take a look at the um, weekly changes, too, for the, some of the major uh products that we fall. The S&P has had a monster r rally, and we started fading it on Thursday, and it basically went straight up. Um, we put some downside on in, uh, in Asia, and stocks were looking a little bit weak, and no one really knows why, but it went straight up, and um, our downside is not looking very good. Uh, they expire this Friday. Um, I think I did say, like, the Euro and the Swiss are real low, like, kind of around the 10% bull area. Um, and oil is now at the 90% threshold, which is extremely, um, that's a very high reading for the bull, bullish sentiment. So I'd say oil and S&Ps, I'm not buying high ones. Um, you know, they might be in an uptrend. Maybe we're supposed to be buying some dips. I'm going to be looking for some topping formations this week in both of those. And and then, like I said, the euro, um, the euro and the Swiss franc. Uh, looking for areas to buy euros and Swiss franc because I just don't think that there's much, um, not much left in it. And it, it, you know, these can stay elevated or depressed for a period of time. And um, so, so, you know, we, we try to use it in conjunction and in, in uh, looking for confluence, confluence with some of our other, you know, shorter term. Maybe I'd like hourly 240 kind of reversal patterns or dailies um, that start shifting the the uh, bias, um, you know, as a more counter trend type trade. Um, as far as performance on the week, dollar index was up smalls. Um, Euro was down about 0.3%. Dollar yen was up 0.7. Cable was down a half a percent. Dollar Swiss was up a half percent. That was after the flash melt up that we saw in dollar Swiss on the open last week. Um, Aussie was up 0.7%, dollar CAD was down tiny. And Kiwi, the you know the, made, the, the biggest G10 outperformer, up 1.76%, and that was on the back of the not too dovish sounding RBNZ, and that, that one stung. Uh, it was a tough week for me and Kiwi. Uh, S&Ps were up 2.5%, and crude oil led the pack up 5.5%. Um, so let's get to the charts. Um, we'll take a look at some uh, look at some outside patterns, outside reversal patterns. Um, if we here's a weekly chart here. Let me pull this up. Uh, I think that's big enough. I'm just gonna before we get to the currency, we're just gonna just go through the. Um, uh, we'll just go through some of the products that had these outside weeks. So oil uh, being one of them. Um, here is the left chart is the weekly. You can see we made a new low. This is a bullish engulfing. We closed just above this third Fibos. This is pretty bullish looking. 
even with it being elevated, but I, you know, it, there could be some sort of oil headline that comes out. So, you know, I'm not buying it up here. Um, it seems pretty overbought to me, but it is a power, very powerful week. Uh, gold may not show up on this trading view. Tra yep, no, it does. Okay, so we had this inside week. The blue bar is an inside, this was an inside negative week in gold uh, two weeks ago. So we were expecting uh, a break. You know, this is this this is this past week's and the blue bar is two weeks ago. We got the break to the top side. We had the falsy below. You know, gold's in a pretty strong uptrend, and uh, now this is the highest weekly close we've seen in a while. You know, way back in uh, February of 2018. So this is pretty pretty bullish. I like this weekly fracco right here, 1328. This was big big area but above there it's 1360 1370 um, so again that was a, a nice bullish engulfing week um, one other one that we are looking at that we actually have some positions in is I think I gotta type it in here because for some reason I don't have it in the we go to Nat gas I know Nat gas sentiments a little low not super uh, I think it's about 35 percent so not, nothing crazy Here's our weekly chart. You can see it. It is a doji week, and um, that's interesting. After having you know three pretty heavy solves, we did make a new low for this whole move, and then on the daily over here on the right, you can see we the previous day was an inside day. We took out the lows just by a bit, and then we closed above the highs. So this is a bullish engulfing day. You know, after an inside day, coupled with this. Um, weekly doji I feel like it's probably time for this to rally and we've got some targets up I'd like to see this daily over here on the right chart uh, 278 to 280 perhaps um, so that is those are the weekly what else do we have if I take oh well the S&P of course had a uh, you know a monster day and a bullish and engulfing day at the highs, you know, making new highs for the year. Um, the big area for me, I don't know why this isn't showing up because I drew it earlier. Let me just show you this. Um, this area in here, there's that gap from the G10 meeting back in uh, at the end of November, early December. You see we had this 30-point gap. So it closed on that Friday at 65-ish, and we opened at 93 um, you know, we're trading 77 on the close, close pretty much right on the highs. I guess we'll go up and fill this gap. And, and there are some, um, there are some targets, uh, up there. Let me see. I've got the, I've got the trend line comes around 2790. So that would be right around the area of the gap fill. I like that area kind of selling at one time, um, just below, you know, between 2790 and 20, um, 2800. I think would be a good little good little spot for a fade here early in the week. Um, WTI we looked at. Um, we do have resistance coming in around 57.20 to 57.40. So that's not too far from here. You, know, you can see this uh, 58, that's around 58 bucks. So somewhere around here are these, these daily highs. Called 57.40 to 50. Eight dollars would be a good area. Um, let's pop back over to the currencies. And if we look here, why don't we start with the euro dollar? Uh, well, let's start with DX, DXY. <clears throat> we had an outside reversal day lower in dollar index, and that's coming off this 97.40 area. You know, a lot of the bulls targets were more up here, but now you're getting this kind of steep trend line. Um, I don't love this trend line, but I'm going to draw it anyhow off of this low here, uh, which was 95. So you got this steep trend line kind of coming in here, and sorry, this wireless mouse closed just below it. Um, you know, the bears are looking at 96.80, 96.70, close at 96.92, we got down to 83. So if we start taking out Friday's low, I think you can expect more downside, and, you know, that we can fill back in some, some of this, uh, you know, retrace some of this, 
it was, there was this 9670 level that was the breakout on the top side. So you can just draw your fibs. Yeah, may as well do it here. Um, from that low up to Friday's high. You know, it's got 96.50, 96.25.30. So that would that would be the fib swing we want to look at for support if the dollar index comes under pressure. Let's pop over to the euro. Um, you know, weekly chart on the left. So we still we did cover from the lows we made a new low but did not take out this all important 115 or 112 15 area um, but we did have some some sellers under these weekly lows 112 70 and we got down to a low of 112 35 um, so for me it's still a 112 15 on the downside 115 15 on the top side um, let me get rid of this fibo here on the um, on the daily on the right chart but you can see this big reversal so it's, it looks similar it was close to a bullish engulfing I actually thought we were going to get it we got it in the dollar index but not in the euro um, there are going to be stops here above Thursday's high 113.10 and then there's going to be some more stops up here above 113.40 so we're watching this closely on the open um, you know the next top side objectives if we start taking out 113 40 is this 113.75 to 85. Uh, let's take a look at cable. So the only thing really moving now, it's it's very early on in the session. This is kind of Wellington time. Again, our, our boys in Sydney are rolling in right now, shaking off the cobwebs from their weekend. Um, oh, and a reminder, we do have a U.S. holiday tomorrow, so a lot of... Uh, and I believe it's ski week out on the East Coast, so that this is this is a week where there's not going to be a lot of North American liquidity. Uh, I think most of the moves will be in Europe. Um, you know, definitely expecting a, a kind of a low liquidity week, just because a lot of these players are going to be out, uh, in particular Monday. Uh, what are we looking at? Oh, anyhow, so the British pound we closed on Friday. Uh, it was pretty bid all day really nothing new on the Brexit front. Uh, it was more just the dollar weakness. And we are trading on the Welly Open right, where are we right now? 20-ish, 20. It looks like it went up to 40. But again, and that's a FIBO. That's a third FIB, so that's kind of interesting. Um, we're trading right around 20. So, you know, that's up 40 points or so from the close. Um, I haven't really seen anything I haven't really seen anything that's that positive. So Euro Sterling is a little bit lower and Sterling's are Again, there's not, nothing really trading. I mean, just to give you an example, dollar yen right now is seven points wide. Cable's like five wide. Euro's four wide. You know, we're early days. Even Aussie and Kiwi. Aussie's 15 wide and Kiwi's 17 wide, it looks like. So we are not really open. Um, anyhow, so Cable, uh, top side, you know, we're we're trading just above this uh, 129.10.20 area and got up to 40. Like I said, there's a high here at 57. And then up here, I kind of like this area, 129, uh, call it 130 the figure to uh, 130.10. So if, if this gets some more legs and we get above this fractal high here, which was that big reversal bar on, was that Wednesday? Um, you know, I could see a retrace get up here close to, close to 130 not really trading it it's too headline driven uh, you know on the downside 127.75 looks very important and then um, below there is this 126.70 okay moving on uh, let's take a look at dollar yen uh, this is starting to show signs of a top right chart is the daily Left chart the weekly. We did go up to 111.15 on Thursday, but then we almost had a, it's kind of a bearish engulfing day when the dollar came under pressure after retail sales, and then Friday was a doji day. So there's a little bit of indecision here. Um, you know, we are short some dollars, um, dollar Swiss in particular, but we're, we're going to watch dollar yet for a clue uh, but for the dollar's next direc direction. Um, and the support in dollar yen, this is that old breakout here. 
So if you look, I'm going to set alert. See on trading view, this little plus sign, you can just boom, boom. It sets an alert automatically. You have to get back into your uh, tickers, but uh, it's a quicker way than, um, and then if you hover over it, you can see here. So uh, maybe that's a little bit high. I think 15 was that high, if I double check that high. But yeah, 16. So that was kind of the breakout. We got down to 25. Um, if we see some dollar weakness here in Asia, I think that there's no reason why we can't retrace some of this. Um, and we're leaning, definitely leaning left in uh, some of the dollar pairs. Um, Aussie dollar. Yeah, well, these Antipodean currencies, I've been getting it pretty wrong. Cost me some money last week, you know, both in Aussie and Kiwi. Uh, pretty strong day. Decent week, left chart. We had made a new low, barely, right in the Asian Open. And we pretty much traded higher the rest of the week. Um, I would say we are looking at um, some top side levels here. Here's that high, that fractal. And, you know, we got up to the third fib Friday, right around 45. 75, and then 72, the figure, would be next. And then you've got some old highs in here, and then that three quarter fib way up at 72.40. So, again, if you see dollar weakness, this would be, might be one to play it. I wouldn't play it if it's a risk off type environment, but I. It's just overall dollar weakness. Aussie and Kiwi, is, you know, even looks better on the chart. Um, oh, dollar CAD. Dollar CAD was kind of interesting. So we we like to look at these. If you look at the right chart, oh, look at the weekly chart left. So we had a reversal lower week, but not anything crazy. It made a new marginal high by a couple pips. 133.40, I think, was a high versus 33 the week before. So, and then we reversed lower just on the dollar weakness theme. Um, and look at this blue bar. So this is a blue, the blue indicates an inside bar. So Friday's bar was inside Thursday's range, right? You can see that pretty clearly here. So for me, I am, although it was a down day, um, you can see because the candles got red around it, meaning it's a red bar. Um, for me, I'm trading the break of, I'm favoring the downside. Uh, I'm going to trade the break of 132. Uh, what was the exact low? 132. Yeah, 132.42. And I would, you know, add below Thursday's low as well, 132.30. You know, and, and you can also you can also play. Now we we don't we're not seeing today's prices yet because it's early. Still got a couple hours before this charting uh, starts picking up on on the ticks. But uh, one thirty three twelve was Friday's high, so I would play either side of uh, Friday's range. A lot of times you get a head fake one way or the other, and then it's you're better off going the other the other direction. So for example, if we get a <clears throat> break above one thirty three, uh, what we said was one thirty three thirteen. And then we break below Friday's low, a 132.40 ish. I think it'd be a better trade um, playing it on the downside, and vice versa. If you get a head fake one on the downside, and then it breaks the top side, you know that the short-term market has just gotten short, and now they're taking out the stops are going to be above that days, that inside days um, range, or in this case, you know, if you're short in the uh, Inside day is high, and you can look at that on the on the weekly. You can look at an hourly, one minute, five minutes. Doesn't really matter. Um, you can see here on the left chart. I got a couple inside weeks. You know, here's an example. Uh, we had a real small range here in January, and then we took out the top side first. Got above here. We rallied up a bit, 60, 70 points, and then we ended up posting a bearish engulfing. So once we broke this. This blue bar low. We closed lower on the week. We sold off in the week, um, and then you know we took another leg down. So that was good for a couple hundred points. Um, you now the weekly's you know a little bit harder to or shorter term um, trading style, but it's worth watching. You can take a look at it. it kind of shows that the market's winding itself up. I love it when I get a couple back to back on an hourly. Um, 
you know, this this uh, this dollar cat could actually be a candidate for maybe a, a straddle. I'll have a look at that on the open and once Tokyo's in. Um, you know, maybe trying to play a break, see what the straddles are like, and and try to play it. Maybe buy something like a two or three day um, straddle and dollar cad, and you know, not really having a directional bias, but more of a this market's wound tight, it's indecisive, and it's going to make a move one way or the other. And that could be led by oil, that could be led by a dollar, it could be a combination, um, you know, whatever's driving it at the time. Uh, let's do we look at S&Ps, NASDAQ's the same chart, I don't want to oh, drop it. Let's take a look at the economic calendar from uh, our friends at Forex Live. RBA minutes, um, so President's Day is tomorrow, so nothing out in the U.S. Family Day in Canada, actually never heard of that. Then we have RBA minutes, that would be uh, like 24 hours from now, um, so Asia, Tuesday morning, Asia. Uh, we have some UK data, uh, the jobs data, average hourly only earnings. You can see these red bars highlight, fairly important. The ZEW, this is very important coming out of Germany, especially with the um, recent weakness that we've seen, and they've dodged the recession. Uh, they dodged a recession just barely last week. Uh, that's expected to continue to de deteriorate, um, minus 18 reading. Uh, what else do we have? New Zealand GDT, GDT price index doesn't seem to really care. Market doesn't care so much about that anymore. Um, we do have some wage price data, the quarterly data out of Australia, producer price index. Uh, we have Fed minutes here on Wednesday. Aussie employment data, that'll be very important. Um, this is supposed to s take a little step back. They had that blockbuster 21,000 last month. It's expected 15. Um, I don't know. Those then those numbers are, are tricky. They never really seem to be telling the full story. And then we have all these European PMIs. So this is Thursday's kind of the big day for us um, in, you know, in Europe. Again, a lot of these, because the economic data surprises have been surprising on the negative side now for a while, in Europe, the analysts bring their estimates down. So my guess is you can start seeing some of these countries beat to the top side because the analysts are becoming very pessimistic on, um, you know, all, all their data, you know, out of Europe from GDP to the PMIs, the manufacturing data, the industrial production data. They're all, there's a real low bar now. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of an uptick and maybe some mean reversion in, in some of this data. Durable goods out of the U.S., ADP. Um, ADP is out next Thursday. All right. Um, we have Fed minutes, which will be important. Um, we have what day are Fed minutes. They're on here somewhere. I know we have Fed minutes. Oh, there they are, Wednesday. Uh, we have... Uh, Australia, the RBA minutes as well, and let me check my notes, and ECB minutes. So all those will be worth listening to. Then we get down to uh, some of the GDP numbers for Q4 and IFO out of Germany and the European CPI data. So cat, and then at the end of the week, the last data point is like the Canadian retail sales. So plenty of data, and uh, I would imagine these straddles are kind of low. I think the euro might be of good value. I think dollar CAD could be good value. Um, I'm going to start with those, and we'll, once I get some pricing, I'll, I'll shoot a tweet out a little bit later once Tokyo's open. All right, I've been rambling too long. <clears throat> i got some stuff to do. Have a, uh, have a great week ahead, and you'll hear from us on the European Open. Again, uh, President's Day in the U.S. tomorrow. Uh, I'll be on Twitter, and if anything comes up throughout the week that requires extra attention, I will uh, I'll shoot out another video. All right, good luck, and have a great week ahead. Cheers.